that's that's really the challenge. Like I, I, um, you know, I started this conversation called "Bury the Ratchet," that was really about emotional and physical violence um, with with girls, and particularly black girls. It wasn't. And here's what's challenging about that is like, you know, you don't want to be in this place where you're policing black girl behavior, right? You don't want to be in a place where you're saying. Um, this is this is an appropriate way to act. You don't want to be in a place where you are trying to narrow expression because to be to be honest, like some of those shows, the um, the humor and the wit of the one-liners are incredible. And then what you see, what it sparks then on Twitter, like like I watch the Twitter shows when these shows are going on because you see this sort of black girl snarky expression that is fierce, but then it's the context of the violence is really difficult. And also I have to continue to remind myself that a lot of the, the you know, witty, snarky back talk is from black women and girls that are not in a crisis. They often are you know, writers or bloggers or girls that have gone to college. They're not, live, they're not ducking bullets for real. They're not, you know, what, what I learned in, in just starting this conversation about, you know, emotional and physical violence with black women through mainstream media, particularly in, um, in reality television shows that, that it, it translates for real in high schools and in um, relationships with girls and relationships with boys or romantic relationships. Like there's a, there's a culture of violence that is being glamorized in a way that is dangerous. So I think one of the first things we can do is what we're doing now is have some conversation, have some interrogate the images and try to bring some media literacy where it is needed, meaning cause it, it's not so much about stopping those shows, but it's about stopping the girls that are watching those shows believing that that is real. Um, and and tr and trying to to really advocate for more shows or more images because that's that's really the biggest sort of issue is that it's in the dearth of all these other images and particularly us as sisters or women together because there are some great shows now where there are black women who have lots of agency and fierce handbags and a lot of power but often they're in isolation you don't see them as sisters, right? So when you look at the reality shows, these are groups of black and Latina and brown women who are in constant conflict with each other. So you're either black in isolation, like you're, you're you know, these, this magical Negro, or you are viciously fighting. So, so what that creates is no space for sisterhood in terms of, um, of what you're absorbing, right? Of what you're seeing is real and what you're seeing is possible. And there are very few, um, inst I mean, even, like, I love Scandal. Like, lo all day, like it takes over Thursday night. But where's her girlfriend, right? So, so the message is you can be so fierce and so amazing and complex and complicated and, and but you don't have a sister, you know, or, you know, or Oprah is so isolated or the, or, you know, the black girl in Glee, you know, like they're like these, these, um, again, this sort of magical Negro exceptionalism creates a space of still otherness, or if we're together, we're fighting. So I think that's where it becomes dangerous. And, and the, and what we can do is really get into conversation about it and also become, you know, activists and, and trying to get just more images available um, that have the same swag. See, because I think that's really important to note is that in these reality shows, the girls just, they have the fiercest new shoes. They've got the biggest, shiniest earrings. They've got the weaves are laid like they look glamorous and so it's attractive and we have to have some kind of alternative like what else if I'm 14 or 15 years old is out there that is as, as attractive um, 
And pain is so relatable with black girls. Like, we know what that feels like. So when you see those girls fighting and calling their mothers all kinds of, like, it's familiar. And, um, and that's the hard part, you know? It's, it's dressed up and it's painful. Those girls are broken. And they're real girls, you know? And then the next crop comes along. Like, where is New York? Right? The, you know, she really was the jump off of this kind of character, you know? And New York is, and her mother, where are they? So these girls are disposable, right? And that, I think that's also the message that comes out is like, just get this hard and fast and, um, and then the next one is coming. So I, I'm still trying to figure that out though, <laughs> to be honest, like how do we really um, combat this and how do we, how do you, um, how do you really get girls and women to understand the value of dignity. Like it's hard to explain what dignity feels like when you've never really had it. It's hard to it's hard to say that and it's hard to to make dignity seem sexier than red bottoms. And it's hard to have a real argument when one of these girls is like, "Well, I'm getting paid." Like I'm getting paid and a hundred people on the staff are getting paid, but a hundred thousand girls are being hurt. Like, how do we, um, how do we combat against that really quick, shiny stuff? Um, I'm still, I'm still trying to figure that out.